end game towers, are towers like hardcore towers, golden perks, and very high level towers. Basically, towers that are very grindy, and are pretty good. We have engineer that deals a lot of DPS from sentries that can hardly get stunned and never gets a debuff. Mercenary bases insane unit stacking which is incredibly overpowered in certain maps, allowing mercenary base to deal absurd DPS and damage buff. This part felt random. Gatling Gunners map wide range, unstun immunity, and piercing with 1000 DPS which shreds high HP tanks. Literally made for hidden wave. All of these towers performs very well and should cheese all modes. But do you really need these towers? Like you can already easily beat hardcore with ranger. And it's not like hardcore towers would make it easier unless you're playing in solo and possibly duo. The hard part of hardcore is always the early game. Maybe golden perks like golden soldier or golden scout would work well in hardcore, if you play matchmaking. Golden crook boss would probably cheese this already. Since after many balance patches that made all bad towers, specifically obtainable towers, good and viable. Sometimes some of these towers need a nerf because they're too good. As non-special towers, towers that are under level 50, not hardcore or golden towers, and event towers, I'll call them NST towers explain easier. As these towers get a buff while endgame towers getting nerfed, their power gap is starting to feel similar where NST towers are able to beat game modes almost as easily as the endgame towers. Basically, there's hardly any power creep in TDS in terms of progression. Since they kind of feel that they perform similarly. I used to play with Accelerator a lot before. But after Ranger got good there's hardly any difference to use Accelerator. I believe it's worse than Ranger cause it gets stunned and receives less buffs from supports due to its overcharge mechanic. This is shocking cause this tower is way more grindier and harder to get than Ranger. Some of y'all would disagree cause you guys probably value DPS more. But unfortunately, the game has become so easy that there's no need for a tower to deal a lot of DPS to be good. It just has to deal with a reasonable amount of DPS to be good and several advantages like good range, stun immunity, and their gimmicks if they have one, to be great. I observed that the late game DPS meta is now heavily around on towers that have stun immunity and range. Why? It is cause we have more options for towers that are immune to stuns that we can just ditch medic for another DPS tower which also ignores stuns and get the same amount of total DPS as with high DPS towers with medic to unstun them. Well this is getting out of topic, the point is, NST towers already deal enough DPS and have other factors to compensate to beat the entire game, excluding difficult maps cause no one cares about beating them in the highest difficulty. Unless you get a very cool skin for your painful work, wow amazing. I haven't even gotten a single fallen skin yet, cause erm, I simply don't wanna bother it, I'm definitely not saving it for hidden wave, anyways, all difficulties, or game modes can be beaten with just a simple ranger or turret tower, just make sure everyone else have it or have any late game DPS tower equal to it. Hardcore. Ranger can solo it. Hidden wave. Ranger and turret can beat it. Special modes, ranger and turret again, or even warden, or just intermediate towers, except when it's polluted wastelands too. Wait I gotta try this. Well, looks like they cheese most of early game. I mean the rest of the game. Intermediate towers only got gunslinger down to phase 2. We could do better. But maybe for another video. If you're complaining about hidden detection you can easily fix it by bringing another tower that can handle hiddens in late game, like ace pilot, warden, and even military base. Hiddens are barely a threat now. So when you see someone ask for players with end game towers such as hardcore and golden perks, remind them this, you don't need them. These towers are good enough already and perform similar if not, possibly better. The only time they'll need these kinds of towers is that they're speed running but that medium is dead now and only practically useful for grinding. Even with having an end game tower you'd still need to learn how to use it. So it can be effective in your grind. Since it won't be like ranger where you can place it down in almost any clip and not worry about enemies leaking. Unless you lack DPS for some reason. At the end of the day, you can beat modes with any practical loadout with at least reasonable grind if you know how to use those towers in your loadout. Wow this just sounds like TDS is balanced. Haha. <laughs>
it's still not cause of the game modes, but overall towers balancing is quite fine compared to before. Speaking of game modes there's also the fact that game modes are generally easy, which is why you can beat them with almost anything at this point, well not anything where you use freezer as your only DPS against void reaver, so yeah that's why you don't need hardcore, golden perks, and high level towers anymore, you don't need to rush or even bother to think it is worth it since it's still gonna be good, just not miles better. I mean it does make it seem that it's not worth it to grind but you have nothing else left to do after beating all difficulties so might as well grind them. And that's it for today's video. If you like what you see drop a like and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. TDS really needs harder game modes, not hard game modes in hard maps. Cause no one cares about beating hard maps with the highest difficulty unless you get a good reward. And also if you're a try hard which is the 0.001% of the player base pretty much, hopefully hardcore rework fixes this. Or special game mode rework, the only reason people would get end game towers now is to make the game even easier, or accomplish their goal in TDS. Well, that's all and thanks for watching.